statistical sampling, we're recognizing that we're at a 90 to 95 percent statistical sampling, which means we're willing to accept that the sample is incorrect or the results from it are incorrect at 5 percent or 10 percent in this example. Tolerable deviation rate. The maximum deviation rate from a prescribed control that the auditor is willing to accept while still considering the control effective. For example, if a control is highly important, the tolerable deviation may be set to 5%, but if, the, if it's only moderately important, we may set it to 10%. So once again, tolerable deviation, what is going to be tolerable within the deviation? The maximum deviation rate, so with the deviation rate now, that's going to be the maximum deviation rate from a prescribed control that the auditor is willing to accept while still considering the control effective. So we're going to say we're, we accept these deviations and we're still going to basically come to the conclusion that the control is effective. Expected population deviation. This is the expected population deviation rate is the rate the auditor expects actually exists in the population. The larger the expected population deviation, so the deviation that the basically deviation from what we're testing, the larger the sample size must be. So if we're considering that there that if we look at it, we consider that there's going to be a larger deviation, then we would want to increase the sample size because there's going to be more risk, not considering any other factors. Attribute sampling population size. Although it would seem so, population size is not an important factor in determining sample size for attributes sampling. So let's read that again because this is a bit counterintuitive if we're not a statistician here. The population size is not an important factor in determining the sample size. And if you're not a statistician, you would probably think that it would be. You'd probably say, well, how do we know what the sample size would be? Well, wouldn't we first need to know how large the population is? In other words, if you're talking about basically trying to poll the entire country and determine what the what their opinion is about a, a certain who they're going to vote for or something like that, you would think that you'd, you'd have a bigger poll just based on how big the country is. In essence, the population size being the thing that's going to determine what your sample size would be. You'd need a bigger sample, you would think, in order to represent a larger population. But that's not uh, the case generally when you're talking about large number type of items. Now, if you're talking about small populations, that may well be the case. The population size has little or no effect on sample size except when the population is relatively small, say less than a thousand. So if you're talking about you want to basically take a sample of something that's less than a thousand and, and think about how big the sample size should be, well, then you, you might adjust it based on how big the sample, uh, the population is if it's something under than under a thousand you might adjust then your sample uh, to coincide with a population that was 500 600 up to a thousand but if you're talking about large populations then that no longer is necessarily the case we do have these relationships below so we're going to have these relationship factors in this table expected population deviation rate so if we want the expected population deviation rate to go lower now this is the expected population deviation rate then the effect on the sample size would be to decrease. So if we want the expected population deviation rate to increase, then we're going to increase the sample size. So these are the factors we're taking into consideration. Then we have the tolerable deviation rate. The tolerable deviation rate, if we want it to go lower, we're actually going to increase the sample size. If we want the tolerable deviation rate to go higher, we're going to decrease the sample size. So in other words, the tolerable deviation rate has that inverse relationship. And then we have the desired confidence level. And that's going to be a straight relationship again. If the desired confidence level, we want it to go lower, then, then the effect on the sample size is to decrease. The desired confidence level, if we want it to go higher, the effect on the sample size is to increase. And then again, the population size, uh, decrease size only when the population is small, say less than something like a thousand.